let's use the complex conjugate to write some very useful expressions for the real and imaginary components of a complex number. So let's start off by writing these useful expressions. So first of all, the real component of a complex number z is equal to the complex number z plus the complex conjugate over 2. And another analogous expression for the imaginary component is that the imaginary component of z is equal to z minus the complex conjugate of z divided by 2i. So this might look like it's just arbitrary and like where does this come from? But what we're actually going to see is that we're going to substitute the Cartesian form of z and z star and we're going to see that this is actually correct. We're going to verify that these expressions work. And then I'm actually going to show you a little a visual intuition as to why these guys work as well. So z is equal to x plus i y. That's how we defined it in the previous video. So let's go ahead and expand this out and substitute that in. So z is equal to x plus i y. And what is z star equal to? Well, the complex conjugate has the same uh, real component, but the uh, imaginary component has a minus sign. So we have minus i y. And we're dividing this by 2. So what are we going to get? We have i y and minus i y. These guys are going to cancel. We're going to get rid of all of the imaginary components. And we're just going to have x and x. That's going to give us 2x. And we're dividing by 2. That's why we're dividing by 2. That's, that's where this factor of 2 is coming from. So 2 cancels with 2, and that gives us x. And x is the real component of z. We defined x to be the real component of z. That's the horizontal component when we represent the complex number z on the complex plane. So we've verified that this works. Now let's verify that this expression works. So again, we're going to substitute in the Cartesian form, because the Cartesian form is very useful for addition and subtraction. And subtraction is just a type of addition. It's a special type of addition where you're adding the additive inverse. So that's the same as adding the negative version of a number. That's what subtraction is. So let's write that in over here. We have z is x plus i y. And I'm going to put this in brackets. What do we have? We have x minus i y. And what's going to happen over here? So we're dividing by 2i, and we'll see why we're dividing by 2i in a second. This guy, this x, and this minus x are going to cancel each other out. Right? This minus sign is going to distribute over to both of these terms. And it's actually going to turn this plus x into a minus x, and this minus iy is going to become a plus iy. So the x's are going to disappear, the real component is going to disappear, and we're just going to be left with two copies of this. So we're going to have 2i times y, divided by 2i. And now you can see where this 2i has come from. So we just cancel that out, and that's going to give us y. And we defined y to be the imaginary component of z. You can see that in, in this Cartesian representation, x is the real component, and y is the imaginary component that multiplies the unit, uh, the, the imaginary unit i. So this is a demonstration as to why these guys work. So we've seen algebraically that they work, We've seen, we've substituted in the Cartesian form, and we've seen some cancellation. And that actually explains where this 2 comes from, and where this 2i comes from. So now let's have a look at a visual intuition as to where uh, these guys come from. So I'm going to draw uh, just the upper quadrant of, uh, the, the top, top right quadrant of the complex plane. So I'm just going to focus in on that. This works for any complex number in the complex plane, but just for simplicity, I'm going to focus in uh, on the, the top right quadrant. So I'll draw that over here. So we have the top right quadrant of the complex plane. And this over here is the real axis, the real component of z, and this is the imaginary component of z. So now let's pick some z to be in this upright quadrant. So this over here is 0, and the other, the other quadrants are going to be in this direction and in this direction. So I'm not going to focus on them. I'm just going to focus up on this direction over here. So all of the negative numbers, the negative real numbers, are going to sit on this line over here. The positive real numbers are in this line. And all of the imaginary numbers are sitting over here. So we're focusing in on numbers that are living in this part over here. So let's draw z. 
So z is going to be some number over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take z and I'm going to split it up into its components. So its real component is x, and up here we have i times y. Its imaginary component is y. So what we can do now is we can visually draw these two representations. We can take z and we can add it to its complex conjugate. The complex conjugate is exactly the same, it just has a minus sign. So we just have to negate the vertical component. And what that's going to look like is this. We're going to have this over here. And what is that going to give us? That's going to give us 2 times x. So this distance is 2 times x. So this up to here is just z. So I'll write this guy is z. And this is what happens when we add z plus the complex conjugate of z. So this is z plus z star. So can you see what happened over here? When we added this guy to the complex conjugate, we collapsed down onto the real axis. And what do we get? We get a complex number that lies directly on the real axis. So it's a real number. This is a real number that lies directly on the real axis. And the length of this real number is x plus x, which is 2x. Where is that 2x coming from? We're getting 1x from the complex conjugate, and we're getting 1x from this original number. So the original complex number z. And the imaginary components are canceling each other out. Because z has a positive y in the vertical direction, and the complex conjugate of z has a negative y in the vertical direction. So they add to 0. So what you end up with is 0 times i. So that's why this is a real number. So this guy uh, actually has to be divided by 2. We have to scale this down by 2 to get back to x. So that explains this factor of a half that appears in the equation. That's why we have to scale back down. Now let's have a look at this. What happens if you subtract the complex conjugate? Well, subtracting the complex conjugate leaves, so we, if we introduce a minus sign over here, this vertical component or the imaginary component remains unchanged. So we have the same imaginary component. But the horizontal or the real component becomes negated. So what is that going to look like? Well, if we take the minus of this guy, that's going to put us up onto here. So it's going to put us up on the vertical axis. And this is going to be 2iy. So it's twice y. So this over here is what happens when you take z and you subtract z star. And what is this equal to? Well, it's equal to 2iy. So what can we infer from this diagram? We can infer that adding z plus z star is equal to 2 times x. And we can also infer that z minus z star is equal to 2iy. So these guys are what we can actually infer from the diagram. And they are actually exactly the same as these two representations over here. So the real component of z, that is equal to x. I'll write this over here. x is equal to the real component of z, and y is equal to the imaginary component of z. Let's also put that in a box. And this is our visual and algebraic uh, intuition playing together. So we can see. Uh, I'll actually I'll add in little arrows so you can see that these guys are kind of acting like vectors. You're adding them kind of like vectors. So if you take z and you add to it the complex conjugate, that's equal to this. So you go over here and then over here. And if you take z and you subtract the complex conjugate, that's going to put you onto the vertical axis. So that's over here. So this over here is z minus z star, and this is z plus z star. And now you see where this 2i and this 2, where those factors are coming from. Because when you, uh, so let, let's examine the first one. When you add the complex conjugate, you are scaled by a factor of 2. So you have scaled by a factor of 2. So you have to scale back by a factor of a half. That's why the 2 is there. And why is this 2i here? We're just interested in this distance up along the vertical axis. If you subtract the complex conjugate, you end up on the vertical axis. And so you have to scale by a factor of a half because you're at twice the imaginary component. So that's why we have to scale down by a factor of a half. So that is where these guys come from. And we use this all the time. Sometimes it's actually useful to substitute the polar form into these guys. And the polar form can be used then to write uh, cosines and sines in terms of exponentials. So we can actually write cosines and sines in terms of exponentials using 
these relationships. So this is just the top right quadrant. But you can actually do this in any quadrant. If this z moved over here, this would still work. If you moved z around anywhere in the complex plane, it would still work. It's because any time you add the complex conjugate, you're going to end up fixing yourself onto the real axis, which is the horizontal axis. And any time you subtract the complex conjugate, you're going to end up fixing yourself onto the vertical axis. And that is the imaginary axis. So that is where this comes from. So you can see that this is what we got from the visual diagram, and this is what we got algebraically. And both the algebraic and the visual, where the geometric intuition are equivalent. So if you found this video useful, make sure to find other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find them if you click over here.